Hi, I'm Paul Conrad, physiotherapist from the West Hill Physio Clinic, and today's video I'm going to talk about tennis elbow. So, what is tennis elbow? Why is my elbow hurting? Um, and kind of talk you through kind of our approach here at the clinic and some self-help things that you can do to try and help yourself a little bit with this uh, rather annoying condition. So, first and foremost, what is it, uh, and why have I got it? So uh, essentially it's, a, it's an overuse uh, injury of the body. Um, medical term for it is uh, lateral epicondylitis. Um, and I'll give you a little bit of anatomy. Um, so on the elbow here, so patients with tennis elbow would typically complain of pain right over the tip of the elbow here. So if you come down the shaft of the humerus here, there's a little bony projection just at the end here and that's called the epicondyle. And Patients will also typically feel pain just in the common extensor origin of the forearm here. Um, and so those muscles uh, are basically what evolve the extension of the wrist and gripping. And those muscles converge into one central tendon that attaches onto the epicondyle here. So typically um, people present with tennis elbow and quite often it's not tennis that provokes it. It's uh, other activities which involve over, over gripping. So uh, this could be um, uh, doing too much sort of uh, pruning in the garden, using second tiers. Uh, this could be um, anything that's involved uh, repeated gripping, using a screwdriver if you're uh, doing some DIY. Um, and uh, yeah, it, it, just start, it just starts to become quite um, uh, generally sort of painful. You feel like a bit of a strain here potentially to start with. Um, and over a period of weeks, it just becomes more and more painful. So things like, you know, just trying to pick up, um, if you're having a cup of tea or coffee, you know, that, that's uncomfortable. Uh, people may come in and they may say, you know, just trying to clean my teeth, brush my hair, um, using the keyboard at work, you know, it's uncomfortable on my, on my elbow. Um, typically, you know, if you've got something that hurts, you're bound to knock it. And so uh, if you keep knocking your elbow, you notice uh, that that's really quite, quite sore and tender. Um, certainly people find that start sort of rubbing the elbow quite often and if you find it's really quite tender over there uh, then yeah that, that, that could be one of the things that you've got. So what do we do to uh, um, uh, sort of diagnose this in the clinic? So first thing we'll just make sure that there's nothing else going on that could present as tennis elbow that could be referred. So we will always check um, range of movement in the neck and just check some clearing questions to make sure there's no referral pattern from the neck which can obviously um, refer down into the arm. So as long as we're happy that there's nothing going on uh, from a spinal or, or, or nerve entrapment that could be uh, causing some of your pain. Um, obviously the localization of the pain, so you know patients have it here, local distribution of pain here. Um, and uh, we do something called a middle finger test. So um, we'll take your wrist, we'll pop it into an extended position just like this, and we push down onto that middle finger here. And uh, if that recreates or reproduces your symptoms, then um, we would uh, have a working diagnosis of uh, tennis elbow. Um, so how do we uh, know what's going on and why does it start hurting? So as I said, it's it's kind of a, uh, um, an overuse injury. So you've effectively strained the muscles. Uh, from other videos, we sort of talk about how sort of disruptive pain is to the body, and pain will actually in, inhibit some of uh, some of the muscles in the forearm. And uh, the muscle that we're probably testing actually when we push down on this middle finger is one called the extensor carpi radialis brevis muscle, so ECRB. Um, and its role really in the body is to stabilise the wrist, okay? So um, it, it kind of uh, maintains uh, uh, this position here. So again, a bit like your core stability muscles, I suppose, in, 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 your, in your spine. If you think about it in a way, it's uh, stabilising the wrist as the bigger muscles over the top are trying to generate power to grip. And what uh, this researcher suggests is that the pain inhibits this ECRB muscle. So it becomes dysfunctional and it's really not doing its task anymore. So what happens now is you continue to use your arm. Um, so you've had a bit of pain, you notice it's been a bit strained after, say you, you, you did something repetitive. Um, but because this muscle's not stabilizing anymore, the muscles over the top are, are, are putting on a, a weak foundation. And what that does, is it creates muscle stiffness because you say, if you're trying to pull on something that's um, effectively moving, you're gonna get subsidence. And that's why this common extensor region starts to get overloaded. It starts to get tight. Um, it starts to cause um, uh, pulling and compression onto the tendon, which then of course pulls onto the bony attachment here, creating pain. So obviously this is why it continued to, to get worse. So every time you apply a load that the 
muscle in the forearm can't cope with, it results in pain and more dysfunction. So the longer it's left, we typically find that sometimes there can be um, um, reduction in range of movement in the elbow, so the, uh, the joint can become stiff. Um, I tend to find when the, the elbow gets quite severe with some patients is they find that you know, just sleeping so they've been slipped with their arm bent and they go to straighten it, that can be quite painful or if they've had their arms stretched out for a while and they try to bend their arm, that can become painful too. And sometimes even the most simple exercises or daily functional tasks such as cleaning your teeth, brushing your hair, that actually becomes really painful as well. So it can actually, in, uh, for some people, be very, very disabling to their everyday uh, function. So how do we try to um, uh, approach this in a clinic and what can you guys do at home? So the first and foremost we want to reduce pain. It's really, really important that we try to reduce pain and then typically that may be trying to restore some movement in the elbow. Uh, we may use tapering um, techniques to try and um, offload the elbow. Um, we may use something called an epiclasp. Again, um, you can get these quite available online. They're not very expensive. They're going to just, uh, cost you a few pounds. Um, but typically it's like a strap that goes over the elbow here and it has a little bit of padding which you can just sort of cushion this so you don't keep knocking it. So again, trying to get the pain down. Um, using massage techniques and stretching to try and sort of just stretch out um, the common extensor origin to increase blood flow, oxygenation to the muscles so that they can recover better. And then really what we want to do is actually get that stability muscle firing up again. Start to get some good load and good strength back into them because as soon as that starts to stabilise, then everything else can start to um, uh, generate more force and your function will start to return. So we use something called isometrics. Isometrics means that we are going to induce a muscle contraction but we're not going to move the joint. Okay, So if I held my elbow here and I just squeeze, you can see the forearm extensor muscles there um, kicking in, I'm not moving the joint, that's what an isometric contraction is. And there's really, really good evidence out there at the moment um, in the research that suggests that uh, isometrics are a fantastic tool for inhibiting pain. So I think it's the converse option. So you have pain inhibits muscle action. So if we can use muscle action to inhibit pain, that's a great thing and it's a really good turn to for patients when your elbow becomes a bit more painful, do an isometric contraction on that muscle without generating pain at the time uh, and, and that will suppress some pain for you. So how do we go about doing that? So um, this is what you guys can try. Again, um, it takes some time, okay? That's the first thing I just want to expect. Don't expect a really, really quick fix with this. If you've had this elbow problem for quite some time, so we're talking about, you know, people with several weeks, you know, more than six weeks, um, you know, this does take a few weeks to settle down, okay? So don't expect a quick fix overnight, but as the strength returns, as will your function, okay? So in the clinic, we tend to um, find, uh, using something like this, this is kind of a stretchy band. Um, it's like a resistance band and we use that to uh, 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 create some resistance. But remember there's a real good toss up between good load and bad load, okay? So bad load is I grip something really hard and it hurts, right? We don't want to be doing that because that just creates more pain, inhibits muscle function, you're not going to get better, right? What we want to do is induce good load. So we're going to get a contraction through the elbow that doesn't produce pain. And then we do that, we can actually start to uh, uh, recover and rehabilitate the arm. So basically what we'll do is uh, to make a small little band, so just tie a little knot, just in the end of this. Uh, so this stuff's called TheraBand, but you can get different sort of uh, products out there, but so they're ready available online. Um, you can get individual strips um, off something like Amazon, okay? So uh, just go and check that out. Comes in different strengths, different grades, different colors, okay? So uh, I'll be, yellow would be the, the lightest resistant, red, green, blue, black. I think they can do a gold one, which is uh, super strong. Really for your um, for, for here, you're only really going to need a fairly light resistance, okay? It's really, really painful. You might go to a very, very light resistance, like yellow, to start with, okay? Tie a little loop in it, pop your hand through it, get the knot to sit just underneath your middle finger here. Um, and again, everybody's different, okay? So you need to gauge the amount of resistance that's right for you, okay? So if you can cope with a, a bit more stretch on this band, so the tighter the band is, the more resistance it's gonna offer, so long as that doesn't cause pain, that's fine. If it does cause pain, then lengthen the band out a little bit or take some of the stretch out of it, okay? So you may find that uh, for some people, they would stand on the band, okay? Starting position would be, have your elbow here at 90 degrees, okay? Make a very small fist and gently extend the wrist. You want it all the way extended, just a little bit, just here, okay? And I'm just holding it there and that's causing a contraction just in my forearm here. And that's it, that's where I'm gonna hold it. We're gonna hold that there for a minute, okay? Again, mustn't be any pain. 
So if I can hold that for a minute and not get any pain, then I may just come off, and then I'll take it in for a second minute. If I don't get any pain after a second minute, I'll then go for a third set of one minute, okay? And then that's all you need to do just once a day, just to start with. Now, if you can do one minute, that's no problem. You go to do a second minute, and after, say, 20, 30 seconds, you start to feel some discomfort in the elbow, stop and just do one minute, okay? You just do this once a day. Same token, if you manage to do two minutes and that's uncomfortable, and you go to do for your third minute and your third minute's painful, then you just do two minutes, okay? So hopefully, um, if you work within that remit, then uh, as, as you get stronger, you'll be able to build up to your third block of one minute, okay? So if that's, um, that stretch is too much, okay, then maybe just hold it like that and just do a very, very gentle contraction on it just like that, okay? Um, modifying your activities is really important while you take on this regime as well. So typically, try not to pick anything up with an overhand grip because that's going to cause that. So we're going to pick it up. If it's just, say, say, some shopping or something like that, use an overhand grip. Obviously, as best as you can, use your other side. Um, that's really important that you modify some of the activities that you're doing. I say you can use a, an epiclasp, use some massage, a bit of stretching. Again, just to the forearm extensors, that will really help you too. As you get a little bit stronger, um, or you can cope with more resistance, and said, you know it's working for you because your function will return, okay? You'll be able to do more. It becomes less irritable. You... Uh, daily task uh, might not be so bothersome or you may actually find as it gets better that you think I've barely noticed pain in my elbow today which is obviously a great thing. Um, so if that gets easier then obviously you increase the resistance. Um, what you're aiming to do is get to a point where actually I can um, start to extend the elbow out further okay, and to the point where you can fully extend it there and hold it for three lots of one minute. Generally when I can get my patients to enter to that kind of stage then it really is starting to bring in some uh, other form of um, strengthening exercises so we can start to load up the elbow more. So we might use uh, you know, some dumbbells or something like that, fix your arm over and you can actually start doing some um, sort of through range uh, wrist extension. Because remember you've already got stability back in that ECRB muscle for using your isometrics. Even while people are start using um, through range ex uh, exercises, I also ask patients to continue with their isometrics because you don't want that uh, a flare up. And I typically get people to do this for a few months um, because it just takes time to consolidate that strength and make sure the pain is suppressed. You can either use that or you can use, start to use um, some body weight exercises once you've got your stability back in the, in the muscle and you're starting to get your function return. So you can do some wall presses, press ups, that kind of stuff, or if you're a gym goer or something like that you can start to integrate it back into some of the activities that you want to do. Some patients, unfortunately, if you're one of those that you're trying to do this and it's just pain, 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 pain all the time, you know, sometimes pain really is a real barrier to rehab and um, unfortunately some patients do come into us and despite our best efforts of trying to use uh, other adjuncts, maybe some acupuncture or all the other techniques that we use, these patients just really can't move on because it's still too painful. And again, um, what we tend to do there is... Uh, contact their, uh, their GP and uh, recommend that they um, have a, a steroid injection if that's appropriate. Um, it depends on where the pain is, quite often if they've got it in the epicondyl and the common extensor region, um, we would recommend that they have a, an injection into two of those places, get the pain and the inflammation down, and that gives them a window of opportunity to go in and uh, strengthen the muscles up to get your function back. So if you know somebody who's had tennis elbow before, um, and they've had an injection, but it's only very short-lived. Don't forget that really is just a window of opportunity to suppress pain, so that we can actually get your function back. And you may find that those patients didn't actually have, uh, didn't do any of the strengthening in the first place, which might be why the uh, injection was less effective for them. Um, don't forget if you've got quite an acute onset, so it's only just been there just for a, a matter of days or a week or so. You may find that you don't have to do all of this. Okay, there, so there is some suggestion out there that it's just good old rest is. Uh, a pretty good tonic for this so again um, you can use a, a sport manager just to offload it modify your daily activities using some um, uh, ice packs that kind of thing um, you know just treat it with kick gloves for a few weeks and that can just calm things down and just enough for the pain to go away uh, and then that can actually resolve without too much further intervention so I'm a great believer the body is a fantastic thing it, it can uh, it can fix itself by itself quite often but if so the pain is arising and niggling for more than sort of six weeks plus you know come get it checked out or you know try some sort of self-help is uh, what the idea of these videos are so I hope you uh, found that helpful that's what tennis elbow is um, do check out our other videos um, also on uh, westhillphysio.co.uk that's our website and we're also on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram and we look forward to seeing you in the next video.